I'm making some new flasks and this video is about making these brackets and getting them installed properly but um, let me just take a second to talk about flasks you know when you start reading about making a foundry and all that it can seem really overwhelming and uh, really expensive and you know the equipment and all the stuff they tell you you have to do and all this um, but I have some of these that I made them out of OSB years ago and they're actually one of my favorite ones they're a small size they work great um, so you know I would say if you're getting started in this uh, hobby just use whatever you can afford and get through it and then what you'll do is you'll it like me now it's because see flasks aren't forever these if you make them out of wood which is what I do some people make them out of aluminum and steel and those, and those are forever but any wooden one is not going to be forever because you're going to burn them up they're going to get uh, you're, you're going to have blowouts and all kinds of stuff that's going to burn them. So over time, uh, you're going to have to replace them anyway. So as some of my OSB ones have gotten kind of burned up, I decided I'd like to make some new ones. So that's what this video is about. But I don't want to discourage anybody from just making whatever they can. Now, what I would say is be sure you get good joints in the sides. Um, those OSB ones I put staples in and glued them and they lasted for a long time but as you you know pound your sand in there you get some pressure that can pop those off so these are screwed in there and uh, I think that's an important uh, aspect but um, so we're gonna get we're gonna get these poured up I show casting these and then machining this uh, to fit correctly and getting these uh, bolts installed all right let's get started okay I think it's just about hot enough Those came out very well. So this is the wood for the flasks and these are 10 inches long, 3 inches tall, and these are 8 inches long and 10 inches tall. And for each set you're going to need four pieces of each. This is two different sets. So now what I'm going to do is get over to the drill press and get them countersunk for the screws. Alright, I'm 3 eighths of an inch in from the end. That puts me right in the middle of the board I'm screwing into. And the distance down is just arbitrary. All right, so here's our countersunk holes. And since I'm using oak, and I would really suggest that you didn't use oak unless you have to. Well, I don't have to, but I had a lot of scraps left over from a dining room, I mean, from a kitchen table that I just got through building. So that's what I'm using. But uh, because of that, I've got to tap, I've got to do a, a hole into uh, this piece right here where it's going to split. Got to do a pilot hole. And it's important to have a flat place to build these because when you get through with them, they've got to be uh, flat so that they'll mesh up between each other. Okay, so they fit on top of each other nicely. They're not perfect as far as being square, but I don't really care because when I get my pins lined up, that's what's going to line this flask up, and, it, um, and I think that'll work. Okay, so the next thing we got to do is get our brackets uh, put on the ends. So now that I've got the first set on, I'm going to check and make sure which way do I like this going. I'm going to screw them on exactly the same way. I'm only putting two screws in these. That other screw is really close to the edge and I don't think I need it. All 
All right, and that's got one set put together. Here's my setup for drilling these out. Now I've marked all of these. This is box one and back behind here it says AA and on the other side it says BB so that from here on out, I'll, all of these I'll know exactly which half goes with which and how they meet together. In other words, you, you won't turn this one that way because it says AA over here. Okay, so now I've got to drill these out. Now I'm doing this on my mill and I know most of you won't have a mill. So don't let that intimidate you. You can use a drill press. You just need to clamp these together so that when you drill this, it's drilled as a unit. Now, if I didn't have any of this, I would I would get just a, uh, if I didn't have a drill press, I would use just a regular uh, drill and just try to get it really level and drill one straight hole all the way through. You know, some of them have a little bubble on the end of them where you can get them really straight. That would be what I would try to do. But since I have this, this is what I'm doing. It's easy for me to clamp them down and it's easy for me to get um, the perfectly straight hole. <laughs> all right, so we've got the uh, got these all drilled out, and now we've just got to put the pegs in there. And these I made these from some three uh, round stock that I had, and I threaded it and rounded over one end. What I should have done, if I had had them in stock, I should have just gotten some 3 8 bolts and cut the head off and just rounded it over a little bit. Would have been a whole lot easier, but I didn't have any in stock, so this is what I did. Okay, so then uh, once I got them, got these tightened up, I went back and I drilled these out to uh, a size larger drill bit, which in my case was actually a, size, a letter uh, drill bit W. Uh, you could use the fractional size, it would just make it just a little bit bigger, and that just allows it to, to slide a little bit easier in and out. Okay, that's got this project finished. I'm sure you're going to see these videos coming up about when I'm making different molds. Hope this was interesting to you. Thank you for watching.